I like to call it tonight, so call it order tonight. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Start again. I like to call the order tonight's meeting of the Gardner Zoning Board of Appeals, September 21st, 2021. Uh, before we begin tonight's hearings, I'd like to go over a few, few of the ground rules upon which we operate. In Gardner, three members of the Zoning Board of Appeals must be present to conduct a legal hearing. Applications will normally be heard in the sequence in which they appeared in the public notice, although the board is no under, under no obligation to adhere to that sequence. All hearings are open to the public and no person shall be excluded unless he or she is considered to be a hindrance to the workings of the board. An applicant may appear in his or her own behalf or be represented by an attorney or an agent. The applicant or his or her representative shall present the case to the board. Representatives of the city shall be heard. Abutters to the property present at the hearing shall be heard. And any other interested parties present at the hearing shall be heard. Those in opposition to the application shall also be heard. The board must render its decision with regard to a variance within 100 days after the application was duly filed in the office of the city clerk. The board regarding special permits must conduct a public hearing within 65 days after the application was filed in the office of the city clerk. The board must render its decision within 90 days after the public hearing. All three members of the board must vote in favor of the variance or the special permit for it to be granted and approved. The right to appeal the decision of this board is provided for in the Zoning Act, the information which is available in the Office of the City Clerk. The burden for supporting the need for a variance or special permit rests with the applicant or representative of the applicant. The board requests that each person identify himself or herself as to the name, address for addressing the board. Sitting on tonight's hearing, to my left, immediate left is Michael Gary. To my far left is Mel Cornett, and I'm acting, Randy Heglin acting as the chair this evening. And this meeting will be taped. Does anybody object to the meeting being taped? Okay, um, <clears throat> I'll just go briefly over the uh, agenda that was posted, duly posted in City Hall and other public locations as, as required. Um, I'd like to make an announcement too that um, any person may make a video already recording of the open session of a meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium subject to the reasonable requirements of the chair as to the number of placement and operation of the equipment used so as not to interfere with the conduct of the meeting. Any person intending to make such recording shall notify the chair forthwith. All documents referenced or used during the meeting must be submitted in duplicate to the clerk. All documents will become part of the official meeting of the record. Is anybody recording other than uh, local access TV? No. Uh, I plan to record since my tone is not here. Pardon me? My tone, I don't see my tone here today. Is it okay to record when they come in and call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the meeting uh, agenda was posted. Today is September 21st, 2021. And uh, there are three hearings um, on the agenda tonight. Um, first one is case 2021-0602. It's a special permit for 75 Oak Street, a multifamily home. Second uh, case to be heard this evening is 2021-0808. It's for variance at 492 Main Street for Bank of America uh, ATM signage. And the third case we're hearing this evening is case number 2021-0901. It's a, it says a special permit, but it's actually a variance for 308 West Broadway for Starbucks. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order. Here in order, we'll call the first case. Um, it's case number 2021-0602. It's a special permit at 75 Oak Street Multifamily Home. It's an application on behalf of the BCF Investments LLC to operate a three, three residential units at 75 Oak Street, Garden Mass. Parcel ID Amazon Mary 27-2457, located in the General Residential 3 Zoning District. And it was denied as it did not comply with Chapter 675, Attachment 1, colon 1 of the City Code of Gardner. The zoning code states that the, the requested use... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Number four, three to four family <coughs> dwelling requires a special permit <coughs> in the general residential three zoning district. BCF Investments LLC. Yeah. Uh, we do have a letter from, from your attorney here that we received this afternoon. I'll read it into the record. 
Um, it's dated uh, September 21st, 2021. It's addressed to the Gardner Zoning Board of Appeals, 115 Pleasant Street, Room 101, Gardner. And regarding case number 2021-0602, BCF Group Incorporated at 75 Oak Street, Dear Sir or Madam, please withdraw the application for a special permit without prejudice regarding 75 Oak Street, Gardner, Mass, 01440. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact our office. Sincerely, Christine, Christine M. Tree, Esquire. Um, is this, this is your desire to withdraw your application at this point? Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion then to uh, allow leave to withdraw the application without prejudice. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Application is withdrawn without prejudice. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, the second case this evening is case number 2021-0808. It's for variance at 492 Main Street, the Bank of America ATM signage. Application, it's an application to construct a sign at 492 Main Street, Garden Mass, parcel ID R22-22-40, located in industrial one zone. It is denied as it does not comply with the approved site plan for the property. Also, a variance for signage was granted for this property on August the 23rd, 2012. Representatives of the Bank of America or 492 Main Street. Yes, sir. Uh, Jake Modesto with Stonefield Engineering. I am here representing uh, the applicant for the CBRB Bank of America. Okay. I just want to be constrained to both of us. Um, so, the property we're talking about tonight is the 492 Main Street. This is Price Chopper. Um, it's important to understand where we are located associated with Price Chopper. Um, we are located actually further the Sherman and Main Street intersection. Now this parcel was subdivided from the larger overarching uh, uh, development, which was Price Chopper. So we are actually 1.36 uh, acre parcel located more again at that Main Street and Sherman intersection. So we are a separate parcel. Now, looking at the price shopper, there was a variance that was requested or granted um, for the price shopper for the signage. And subject to that, we are required um, to submit for a basically an exacerbation of that variance because our parcel was subject to that larger overarching development. So the location of the existing price shopper freestanding sign is located across Main Street. It's at the entrance um, along Main Street. It's a signalized intersection. Um, and there's obviously associated building signage um, that is in excess of it was 466 square feet. Um, now what the applicant is looking to do is to construct a small ATM kiosk located within um, the, we'll call it the 1.6, the out parcel uh, for the larger shopping center away from the price shopper. It's on a separate parcel. It is a small walk-up ATM. Uh, it sits, sits more, no more than 11 or 12 feet in height. Um, it's about a five by eight and a half foot box. Uh, it's a small kiosk. This is a, a visual rep uh, representation. It's a rendering of both the, the signage that we are proposing, so the freestanding sign, and the ATM for the board's uh, reference. So this is actually looking westbound, as if you were heading, uh, you basically you pass by um, <coughs> the signalized intersection, heading west. So that is just a visual showing that. So the sign itself is just under 30 square feet, it's 29.75 square feet, um, and is located 10 feet from the property line at the heart corner. Now, looking at this application compared to the last one, especially you know, looking at some of the post and you know, the approvals for the price shopper, we took a look at you know, what was approved um, and its location. Now, our location for the ATM is actually set close to 200 feet away from uh, the sign. The signs really provide us with with wayfinding, right? Being able to have customers safely get to and from the location. I think it's important to understand some of the topographic changes as we go. Um, if you <coughs> I'm just going to do another rendering. So as you go up eastbound uh, Main Street, you can see you have a slight it's curvature of the roadway. There's some foliage blocking the actual uh, ATM location. So we do think it's important um, that we have the Bank of America logo sign located up in front. Uh, with the proper, proper size to clearly uh, provide a safe, uh, basically, identification away. Excuse me, which, uh, which entry point 
onto that property you consider to be the main entry? The main entry for the price shop where we're expecting most of our traffic to be is actually from uh, the, the existing signalized intersection. Um, however, we do note that a lot of times people, I know myself today, made the, the left to the price shopper because I saw the price shopper sign. I want to make a safe maneuver um, into the, um, the actual Sherman Street uh, right away. So we want to locate their proper site distance, the ability for our customers to see and recognize where the actual ATM is located. Um, you know, these, these are mostly because of that and the location. And I think it's in line with um, what was previously approved. You can actually see. Uh, the price shopper sign. You can see again. This is only I think it's two and a half, uh, 250 feet away from this sign. You can see how much, um, how small it is as you, you know, progress up uh, Main Street uh, towards the site. So, I do you think it's in line with a lot of the other um, signs in the area? Going west down, going back down um, from the signalized intersection, we, we did identify as the main entrance. There is this building that does protrude almost at the property line that does block quite a bit of sight distance to the, to the actual <coughs> ATM. Again, you can visually see how small that eight, that sign does get um, from the eastbound uh, Main Street um, visual. It, we're, we're expecting that exact same issue to happen here. You come around the corner, we don't know. We expect, again, if you're trying to get to the shopping center, you know it, we, it's a pass by user. We're expecting people to know where it is. But if you don't know, um, the, the intent here is that you would you pass by and you, you would see it almost too late. We'd like to crowd people in here, but if we don't have that sign here, you would easily bypass it. Um, you know, Google Maps is, is one thing when people are trying to find it on their way, uh, maybe to a different location, not Price Shopper. But I think visually, you know, these provide us what we need um, to be, you know, provide safe access to the site. What did you say the setback was from Sherman Street, to, let's say, to the rear of that ATM? 20, it's uh, 22 feet. 22 feet. Yeah. Is there anything to prevent people from pulling over on Sherman Street and walking across the lawn to that? Uh, there's no sign like uh, parking. I, I would, not that I'm aware of. Okay. You had mentioned the uh, the two lots. There was an out lot that was, I guess, yes, the site. Um, is it common ownership though? Uh, I believe it is. I'd have to confirm that. Okay. Baker America's not buying the parcel. We are just simply leasing. You're leasing, yeah, yes. absolutely. We're just leasing a small portion uh, yep. across the street. Can you, um, you, you mentioned the sign um, for the sake of the audience is 29.75 square feet. Can you give us some dimensions? I know it's in your application, some dimensions off of the, off of the, uh, off the ground, how high off the ground it is, um, yeah, dimensions just, of the signs. <clears throat> Approximately six feet off the, off the ground. Again, with the, uh, the overall size uh, just being under eight feet uh, with the total square footage of, of 29.75. Is that a lit sign? It is. Internal? Internal. The bottom of the sign is 30, 30, 30 inches. Yep. It's away, it's away from the pedestrian. It's 10 feet away from any pedestrian access at a minimum, so we're not expecting any head height and issues. Is it, can we go back to, I guess, uh, that pictorial there? Um, that is to scale, that's a representative of, representation of what it's going to look like? Yeah, as close it's, as we can, yes. Is there any impact to site distance for vehicular traffic coming out of Sherman Street and turning left? No. You'll be able to pull clear past that to this location. You actually see a stop bar here. Mm -hmm. Set back going on just to the south land, the right. Um, but you know, our office isn't going to impair any kind of site movements. Okay. You can see it just it does tail out. Almost, just, you tease up, so you actually come out a little bit further in the sign. The sign will be located in this general area. Okay. Internally eliminated 24 hours a day, obviously, because yes. your ATM is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, can you go? 
give us some rationale why you can't use the existing freestanding sign again? So the existing freestanding sign is located, I'd say almost, it is 350 feet away from our proposed um, our proposed uh, location. I actually think we'd still be back in front of you for a size variance because that was only approved um, with a set number of size. Again, that was a, it was 466 square feet and that sign was part of it. Uh, totally, it was 73 uh, square feet. Um, so I think we'd still be back in front of you. Uh, not a freestanding sign, but it's you know, part of the construction. So we think having it closer to the actual facility that we are signing for is a better operation, especially at the hard corner where we like to have signs. You can see the same thing here. It's, it's at the hard corner of this intersection of the driveway, same with Sherman and Main Street. Questions from the board? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Okay, um, in a variance, there are three three questions that you need to address. Um, I didn't see it addressed in the application, um, but I know it was attached to uh, it was attached to the application. But I didn't see them individually attend, so I'll go through them. Um, can you talk to us about how you feel a little enforcement of position of the provisions of the code? would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner relating to the circumstances relating to soil condition, shape, or topography of the land. I think we spoke about the topography coming up from the safety concern, actually, uh, from the site, uh, from adjoining road networks, um, the configuration of the parcel itself. Um, as it relates, we would be compliant if this, the price shot, there was not an existing variance on the, the overall development. We'd have to be able to have a freestanding sign and our building signage um, by code. Okay. Um, does your proposal to create or aggravate a safety hazard? No, I think it, it actually increases the we finding safety. sign. Yeah. And obviously, your request derogates from the intent of the, you know, the purpose of the code because you're here this evening. Um, you know, you, you've laid out a case of why you feel that this this second uh, freestanding sign is is appropriate. Um, if the board shall decide. To not approve second freestanding sign, what is your plan B? Um, I have to. I think we have to evaluate the bank. I actually don't know plan B at this time. Okay. Uh, with not having the necessary signage, you know, for this ATM, we have to evaluate that. Um, so, you know, I don't know if we'd have the customer safety, uh, for their, you know, really directional for the bank. Okay. All right. Um, anything else from the board? I'll go to the audience. No. No. I think representatives of the city would like to speak with regard to this application. Mr. Jean. Through the chair, Jake, have you guys um, done any research on how we're going to power the ATM and the sign? Uh, the ATM will be pulling off. There's an electrical pole actually on the west side um, of Sherman Street, and we'll be running a conduit to the ATM, which will then feed the. With, uh, with your own service? Uh, with our own service, yes. Own this, service. this will be completely separate. Everything we're proposing will be controlled by the bank. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. The other question I have is there's no entrance there, so what is this sign telling people? It's telling people that there's an ATM in the parking lot. Correct. It seems like a sign at the main entrance would do the same thing. At the because main, this sign doesn't tell people that they need to turn up Sherman Street and take a right to get to your ATM. At that point, you've identified, the, the, main, the main point is if you, if you haven't identified at this point from, from here, able to make the turn into the shopping center, Oh. Um, you'd be able to make the left. At that point, you're passing by the mm -hmm. ATM. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit of ATM, um, uh, Bank of America branding signage around it. You should be able to, at that point, identify uh, the ATM because uh, you'll be driving by it. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Mr. Beauregard. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I'm Trevor Beauregard, Director of Community Development Planning for the City. Um, just a few things. The site is actually owned by the same entity, both both parcels. I did speak to the uh, commercial firm that recently purchased it out of Denham about a month ago um, and made them aware of what was going on here. Um, so as you, as you probably know, the original site plan approval decision conditioned that any application for a variance to the city's sign ordinance shall be approved by the planning board prior to submission to the Zoning Board of Appeals for this project when it was originally approved in 2011. That was a condition of your site plan approval? It was. Really? It was. Okay. So, I wasn't aware of that. 
Yeah, in July, July 13th, 2021, the planning board held a meeting and had this proposal in front of them. Um, at that meeting, I did comment that the sign seems like overkill uh, for an ATM to have a sign of that size. Um, unfortunately, the planning board proceeded to then vote uh, to approve the sign plan so that uh, the applicant can move forward to the ZBA for uh, approval of the variance. Um, only after that did I finally locate the approved site plan uh, for this. It was buried on my table in my office, unfortunately. Um, I did notice on the approved site plan there was an approved pad at that corner of the site, or I think a three to 4,000 square foot building, uh, which again, I think would be problematic if a sign was located there, especially a sign six feet by nine feet in size. Um, so Mr. Modesto, to answer that question, I remember that that pad being in. If if that site is developed with a, a pad as was in the original site, site plan, what happens to your sign? So I don't know too much of the actual we'll call proceedings if this was to be developed. I think I've never seen a plan where the building was generally located in the green space here. I think that actually speaks more to the need for the sign, right? Because if the building is located <coughs> here, we're actually blocking the ATM itself. Right? The, the, ident the identification sign becomes even more prominent. I, I don't have the setback or the plans that was approved for that location, but I remember it being upward in the front. I can't remember if it was 20 feet or 15 feet. The sign would still be visible, and I think the need for it, again, would be actually exacerbated um, because of block sight lines. Okay. Mr. Burgard, you said the property has recently been transferred? Yep. 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 So the, the file we have from attorney Wickstrom, is that still valid as... You want his representative? I can't speak to that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not here as far as the owner. I'm here on TVR. I don't know. Okay. But they did sign, the, the owner, the current owner did sign the application for us to submit. Simra so Gardens, LLC, is that the current owner? I, I don't think so. I think that's the previous owner. Yeah, it was, um, I can look back at the actual owner. It was, I want to say it was black. Yeah, black. 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 It was black something, Jimmy. I'll put it on there. The original one was black and I think it turned to like another subsidy. I think we actually sold the LLC. It's a different address with an owner. Um, no, you're right, you're right. It, it is the gardens. Simmer Gardens is the current owner? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we do, uh, just for the record, we do have a letter from the property owner's um, attorney and agent. Um, um, authorizing the petitioner to Bank of America and CBRE to, to make an application to seek zoning relief. I'm sure if there was an, uh, another change of ownership, that right was passed along to the new owner. I mean, that's, that's, I don't think that's a question. I, uh, the only, I mean, the issue I have obviously is the size of the sign, the location, um, the potential to affect what was originally master plans on the site. Um, in my opinion, I, I, I think the applicant should pursue signage on the standalone pylon sign that's already been approved and located at the site. Um, you know, you have a potential <coughs> of a half dozen more businesses going in there with the full build out. There's 64,000 square feet approved to, for a build out at that site. Um, if every single one of those businesses wants a standalone sign, it's pretty crowded problems. pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. That whole green space on the front is going to be pretty crowded. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I'd like to see the applicant work with the current owner and try to come up with a, a better signage plan or, or another location for that sign, i.e. On the, on the existing bylaw. Got it. I mean, just as, as far as that, you know, I, I hate to be the, the, the guy who says it, but it is speculation right now as far as the development and when that is going to occur. Um, you know, we are under a leased contract. Obviously, it renews um, ever so often. Um, so that may not be renewed uh, if, if a future development comes on. I believe any application was to come in from the proposed signage, it would be then in front of this board to make the determination um, whether or not that the proposed signage is fitting um, <coughs> at that time. Uh, we don't know. There's nothing been proposed. That's my knowledge. That's the bank's knowledge. Um, again, the landlord has signed off on this location. I think they're, they're full in understanding the restrictions that would be put on the property or the, you know, 
the, the, the request that would be put in the property and anything going in front of the, you know, as far as new development would have to go in front of the board for our signage. Mr. Chair, if I may. Mr. Peter, okay. the, the pad has been approved already and the signage hasn't. Um, for that reason, I would ask the board not to vote in favor of this application for areas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Are there any uh, abutters to the uh, property who would like to speak in favor of this application? Are there any abutters to the property who would like to speak in favor? Are there any abutters who, abutters who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Are there any abutters who would like to speak in opposition? Um, is there anybody present who would like to speak with regard to this application, be the pro or con? Anybody present like to speak with regard to this application? Um, Mr. Modesto, um, you know, I, I, I made a note too that there's almost 30 square feet for the signage. What, if this was reduced down in size, what, what, what are the other standard options that Bank of America has? Um, as far as signage, I have to go back the exact square foot numbers. So don't hold, I don't know if this on the record, but I, there are a smaller package. I believe there is a, a 20 and a 15 square foot sign that accompany some of these ATMs we've seen in the past. Um, again, bank, the Bank of America has a, The ATMs or is it a full service bank? It, it's an ATM. It's a walk up ATM. Uh, the only thing you basically can't do with these ATMs is take out a mortgage. I mean, you can make deposits. It's, it is the future of most of banking that if people are, you know, in a company with brick and mortars, the bank is proposing. Okay. I guess one thought came to mind. How many parking spaces will be taken up with, with this? Three. Not, they're only, you're only going to lose three, three parking. parking spaces. will be fully compliant. I think there's 591 parking spaces on okay. the site. We'll have 588 out of the That answers it. Your, um, the ATM's not removing any of those trees along no. the Sherman Street. No, we all. kept it all within the actual parking lot. Within the parking lot. Utilizing some of the existing Okay. As those trees are put up as a as a screen. Um, I think most of this, the variance was related to the signage on the building, or as I recall. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions from the board? No. <clears throat> okay. Desire. Definitely like to do a site visit. Okay. Um, I, I, I think it perhaps is a good idea. Um, what we've done with sign requests in the past, I mean, we don't need uh, <clears throat> a sheet of plywood and you know some kind of configuration to get a sense of the size of the sign, mm -hmm. how it's going to be located, how high off the ground. Mm -hmm. we've, we've required that in the past of sign applications. And I think that would probably be appropriate for the one on, I mean, I still have a, a little bit of a concern about sight distance looking to the left up, up Main Street. Um, in, in what sense? Well, I think, you know, it's 30 inches. Are you, are you seeing coming from Sherman? Or are you seeing yeah, coming out of Sherman Street. Okay. You know, I, I, I just want to, in my own mind, be sure that it's, 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 it's not impacting the sight distance in that direction. But it can be just something fabricated from some two by threes or two by twos or something just to get a sense of the dimensions and the size. Mm -hmm. Good? Yeah. I'm good. Um, so that would just be for that sign? Yeah, just that because that's the only one you're, you're seeking a variance for is the, the freestanding sign. And if we went to a smaller configuration, if I was able to speak with my client about if it's still freestanding, it's be in the same boat. Understanding that we go with a smaller freestanding sign, maybe alleviate some of the concerns that you may have regarding the visual from the left. Perhaps. Perhaps. I think we'd know more after the site visit. Site visit. How long do you think you need to um, come up with some type of, or you need to have a discussion with your applicant, with the applicant? Yeah. And also uh, to come up with some kind of mock-up dimensionally size. 
it's like I said, it's a temporary thing. It can be just scrap wood. I don't care what it. You know. Right. It can be Tyvek. I, I I don't know. Uh, maybe thirty days is something that the next hearing. I don't know if that's possible. Um, we generally like to do site visits prior to the next meetings, um, but Rachel was telling me that uh, um, our October meeting is is book solid. So it'd probably be continued to November anyway. Um, maybe, uh, why don't you? So yeah, just to be very honest with, with, with the, the board and, and, and everyone in the public, you know, this, this is slated. We are trying to get this done as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think actually timeline too for the bank in this scenario is actually a big dictator um, of moving forward. And uh, they should I have applied sooner. We, there is a, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I concurrent I, with the planning. Right, and, and, and we, we don't, don't force us to no, rush our schedule, I, please. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to, to push the, the. I was trying to go somewhere else with this. Actually, um, is it possible to get a conditional approval with? I guess if we eliminated the signage, um, we, the, the, the sign is the only item that's before us. Right. Whether so you can obtain a permit for everything else on the site, that's up to to Mr. Gene. And so then, so and if you wanted to. Yeah, you know, I guess roll the, the dice the and roll the dice on the signage and say, well, the question would be, I guess, is you know, if we could come under a separate application for a, if if the applicant, I'm just talking. I mean, I need to talk to the, the board uh, the professionals a little bit further. But if the applicant was to remove the sign from the application now and then proceed with a different application for a a, a, um, a sign mounted on that um, existing. Um, Price chopper mm -hmm. uh, sign. Would that be a separate application, or would that would that need to be accompany this ATM? I need to understand this in order to proceed with the bank. Um, Amending the application. The to move it to the freestanding pylon. To the freestanding pylon sign. He says it's going to exceed the square footage. So it's a different issue. It, it would it would be a, a separate application. Yes. Separate different issue. The building the. ATM itself has signs on it as well. Right. So this this hearing tonight is not only for the freestanding sign; it's for the signs on the building because the the site is already maxed out for signs. Mm -hmm. so any sign requires a variance at this point. No, I didn't. Uh, that, that's what I was. I guess I didn't understand. I didn't. I didn't understand that. I, free, so I started jumping on that. Uh, I didn't understand that. I. 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 Um, yeah. So the, the, I the, the was, ATM. Uh, we can go to the ATM too. If it helps the board. So you can see the Bank of America brand logo. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually just under one square foot. This is just under six square feet. There's four sides of the Bank of America branding. Um, going around the ATM. They illumi internally illuminated all yes. the way around? I know when the previous variance was up before us with, with Price Chopper, there was a lot of concern with regard to the Sherman Street side and what the, the glare would be um, from you know, the signage. And, 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 and I'm not sure I understood the representatives of Price Chopper or whether they were not necessarily 100 percent you know foot right with the board but the glare on the budding properties on sherman street is pretty significant exactly just from the existing signs <coughs> how bright are these in, in what sense well, how bright are these signs as illumination i don't yeah. have that number um yeah. you know we normally look at Light generation and foot candles and glares sometimes tough to mm -hmm. identify. Obviously, looking directly at a light is a little different than the light generated from it. Yeah, I, I know. I, was, yeah, I know it's trying. I don't it, have yeah, that one. I'm sorry. Seems like there, there's some place to start lighting. Yeah, Mr. Trevor. Um, so they did submit a lighting plan with their uh, attic. 
I believe it might be in your packet too. It, it is. It, so, I, yeah, I so remember the light. The lighting, the lighting plan yeah, so only. Those, uh, it doesn't address glare. Yeah, that's yeah. what the lighting plan doesn't address glare, and that's the issue. Yeah, and, and I don't think from a, a metric standpoint, it's tough to measure glare um, in any metric. I think that's actually why we come up with the, you know, as, as engineers, we come up with the one foot candle or the. Mm -hmm. Camera generation. It's, 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 again, it's a different light. If you look and stare directly at a light, it's going to blind you. It's, it's different than what's being generated from it. Um, so there's no you know, way to quantify the glare. Okay, I, mis I, I was misunderstood. I thought for sure it was just related to the freestanding sign. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of always bringing up the, the freestanding signs. If it's, if it's a separate application for the freestanding, I can work with the bank on, on a separate application, <coughs> and we have obtained approval for the ATM, I think that the, you know, the bank would be amenable at least coming back, or at least evaluating that further under a separate application for that freestanding sign, without question. Um, the ATM signage, <coughs> we think is, it, it's, it's a neat must-have, um, as far as branding, identification, locations, um, you know, it's not significant. It's compliant without by code, um, without the price chopper. Um, you know, overarching variance. You know, we're looking at you know a one just just under a one square foot sign, and, and then a, and a five point. I think it's nine seven square foot sign. These are, so these are 10, 11, 12 square feet total. Yeah, approximately something like, like that. Fourteen square feet. Yeah, I apologize. I totally missed that. Yeah, as your application does say proposed signage to include the wall sign and freestanding, but when I read, I, I didn't. Your plan read. also says, you know, so I was looking at the lighting plan, it says all existing tree limbs within 60 foot ATM radius shown on the plan shall be trimmed, but you said you weren't trimming trees. Oh, we're not removing trees. There may be a slight trimming depending on the height of the tree. Um, and the clearance underneath it. So Bank of America has its own lighting security um, that we, we implement throughout the country to ensure proper illumination around the ATM for customer safety. Um, as part of that, we make sure that there is no light uh, being blocked at 36 inches and above. Um, so the trees are slightly trimmed. I believe it's at six feet um, that they are trimmed so it doesn't block any of the light generated from um, the, um, the poles. So that those areas are properly illuminated. That's that's all that that statement is. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah for the for the freestanding sign. Yeah. Do we want to separate them? Can well, we separate I, I guess, them? Uh, yeah. yeah, I suppose you probably could. Mr. Gene, perhaps if we're going to take the time to do a site visit, that would give the applicant time to amend the application to exclude the freestanding sign and, and put it on the existing pylon, and then we could consider the signs on the ATM and the pylon sign and exclude the freestanding sign. Does it, any sense to you, Dick? In, in tonight's tonight's uh, application? We would you would amend the you would amend the application mm -hmm. if the board's okay with that. Yeah. In the, in the meantime before the site visit so that they can see and then possibly you want to see on the pylon sign how big they're planned, what they have in mind. But if Jake says they need 30 days to make that happen, then everybody's got time to get the paperwork done and make the, the mock-ups. It seems like a reasonable solution. Actually, we can continue to October to have a pretty full agenda. We yeah. those. We've gone long before. You here? Yeah. Sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah, just to, we'll continue the hearing to the October meeting and allow you to discuss with your with your app, with your client what to do with the freestanding signs. 
and then that you can make a decision within the 30 days whether to amend the existing application or not. So we have to amend the application and just amend it. it. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Yep. All right. Sense. All right. So we'll leave the uh, <clears throat> meeting open. The October meeting is the 19th. October the 19th. <clears throat> and if in the 30 days you, you can come up with the mock-up and stuff like that so we can arrange the uh, site visit before the hearing yeah so that, that would be good yeah I, that would I be helpful and just you just let rachel know and she's pretty good at corralling all of us to come up with a common date yeah. so i'm in within 30 days so you guys can have yeah, yeah, so yeah, so if we can get the site visit done and everything within the 30 days, and we should we'll be in a better situation. Okay, that hearings continue to October the 19th. Is that what I said? Yep. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Next case um, on the agenda is case number 2021 dash. 0901, it's, it says a special permit for 308 West Broadway, Starbucks signage. Uh, the first part of it is an application to construct two directional signs at 308 West Broadway, parcel ID R17-1614A, and it's located in the Con Commercial 2 Zoning District, and it was denied because it does not comply with 67, Chapter 675-970, Letter D. Directional signs, directional signs may be erected near a street, driveway, a parking area if necessary for the safety and direction of vehicular or pedestrian traffic. The display area of each directional sign shall not exceed two square feet and no directional sign shall be located more than six feet above the ground if mounted on a wall <coughs> of a building or more than three and a half feet above the ground if freestanding. Directional signs shall not advertise, identify, or promote any product, person, premises, um, but may identify the street name and number and provide directions of this quote close quote, of the city code of Gardner. The zoning code states that your use is not permitted in the commercial two zoning district. The second application is an application to construct a five foot tall sign at 308 West Broadway. Gardner Mass parcel ID R17-16-14A It's located in the commercial two zoning district. It was denied because it did not comply with chapter 675-970 letter A. Quote, wall sign or individual letter sign. A wall sign or individual letter sign shall not exceed four feet in height. A wall sign or individual letter sign on the exterior wall, the first floor of a building shall not exceed an area two square feet for each linear foot of wall or 80 square feet, whichever is less. The length of signs of establishments occupying other than the first floor of a building shall not exceed six feet and no portion of wall sign or individual sign shall project more than one foot above the face of the wall or above the wall of any building. In no case shall a sign project above a parapet wall. An establishment may, may divide the entire display area permitted herein to separate wall signs or individual letter signs provided the maximum height of each separate sign does not exceed the maximum height permitted herein and the sum of aggregate width and area of a separate sign does not exceed the maximum permitted herein. That's one heck of a long sentence. <laughs> yeah. Close quote. So the city code of Gardner. The zoning code states that the use request is not permitted for use in the zoning district. Uh, do we have the representative of Starbucks here this evening? Hi, my name's uh, Andy. I'm from Serago Signs. Okay, um, Mr. Serago, first question for you. Um, you submitted as a special permit. The application is a special permit. It's actually a variance. Um, is there a reason why you chose a special permit over variance? When we, <coughs> unless I misunderstood on what we needed to apply for. You're, you're requesting, your, 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 your requests are deviating or, or um, uh, you're seeking uh, relief from the requirements of the Zoning Board, which is a, uh, the Zoning Act, Zoning Code, which is a variance. We get the information. I believe we reached out to the town in which direction we should go with this, and I believe we were led to believe that 
was supposed to be a special permit that we applied for those. Unless I'm missing something, Mr. Jean. Am I? I believe you're correct. Okay. So what would you like to do? Do you want to continue the hearing and regroup? Because there's a few things you'll need to address as a variance, which is different than a special permit. I guess we'll have to continue. That's not what I was the understanding. I would apply for a special permit. <coughs> Okay. Um, Usually when we get a denial on something, we ask the question of the town on which direction to go. And I believe the information that was given to us was that we follow a special permit for this. That's why I went that direction. Um, desire of the board, what do you want to do? you want to let him continue and just answer as he goes, or do we? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to go down that path. I just assume have a clean, be prepared. clean application so we can look at it. Okay, well, we'll continue it then. Um, October, here we go. So um, who could I speak with within the city so I get the proper information? Because when we called to get the information, I was basically told that I should hire a lawyer. And I've done many of variants and special permits and... Yeah, you don't have to hire an attorney. A lot of people come in like you, like yourself, that represent a client. The person my assistant spoke to was first words from the person within the city said, yeah. you should hire a lawyer. And Not I required. believe we had to. And then we asked what we should apply for and we were told a special permit. Well, I, I apologize if you received the wrong wrong message. I mean, okay. uh, the billing commissioner is here and he's the, the you know the enforcement of the billing code. He's a, he's a very busy man and I needed somebody else to speak to to get the proper information. So. What do I, who do I talk to and what do I do at this point being you know, to continue to amend this to the zoning? <coughs> um, what I would do is submit with, you can submit the same application. I would cross off special permit, check off variance instead, and go through, there's, within the package that you received, there should have been a, the three issues that um, you need to address as for a variance, which I, discussed with this gentleman here earlier um, and you know address that in the application and then just resubmit it to the office okay. as an amended application I would ra waive a resubmittal fee yeah I'm, I'm okay so who what's the person's name within the town or the city that I speak to on this well Rachel is our administrative assistant and the, the zoning court enforcement is the building commissioner okay. Mr. Jean. I've learned anything. You don't argue with the building inspector. So I'll, I'll leave on a good note. <laughs> okay. I, this, it took us a long time to get the information we needed to get this application in place. Oh, I have and again, I, I, everyone's busy, and I, was, I believe I, this was the information I needed to apply. So. Okay. I apologize if you didn't, didn't you, you received erroneous information. Um, so if I can get the proper information in, as I'm hearing from the last time I about. October's a pretty busy meeting, so I might wait until November. So I can my customers. Well, I know, I know, I know. Um, this is obviously a front burner issue for for the for the store too. Um, what the store did, in all fairness to the board as well, is they needed to get signs put up. So we applied and you know, put signs up for the sizes that are allowed. So I. Like, we also, I guess at this point, requested the board go by and look at the signs that are up there because part of my fight's going to be size on the two ball signs. So, with due respect, if I can request in the meantime before the next meeting. I drive by there go. several times a week, so. Okay. I as do I. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> um, motion to continue. So moved. To okay. October? Yes. To October. Yeah. So Rachel, uh, since you left, can you just let them know it's continued until October, Absolutely. please? Thank you. Okay, the next and uh, item we had on the agenda um, was acceptance of some minutes from uh, uh, previous meetings. Um, actually, we have some additional business. Uh, further business for the board was a uh, Conversation with Attorney Tree to Rachel regarding a site visit at West, uh, 
West Broadway um, subdivision to wants uh, to no availability, but I think that's the Ray sitting on that case, so we need to yeah. um, worry about that with Ray. Um, the last item is the acceptance of the minutes. I'll, be, I'll entertain a motion then to accept the minutes of the meeting, August 17, 2021. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Second uh, minutes to approve is site visit at 262 Elm Street on August the 21st, 2021 at 9 a.m. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Site visit uh, 75 Oak Street, August 26, 2021 at 6 o'clock. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And decision meeting minutes dated September the 14th, 2021 at 630. Moved to be accepted is corrected. Seconded. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Any other business before the board? No? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.